Arc Titans with Storm Grenades definitely take the cake this season for the best GM build. However, in seasons that we don't have Arc Burn in the lineup quite as much, or if you're just trying to carry some players through GMs, the Void Hunter build I have today is one of the best to use. I am a Warlock main personally and have been using this build for the most part when doing GMs these last few seasons. The Invis, ability to gen ammo for your team, and the ability to constantly debuff enemies goes unmatched. Yo, what's going on guys, it's G-Miners here, and in this video we are going over what I think is one of the best GM builds in the entire game, and it honestly works in Master Raids and Dungeons as well, and my team even takes this build into our Day 1 Raid Comps too. I'm a little sick right now, so I apologize for sounding off, but I really wanted to get this build out to you guys, especially with Fallen Saber coming out this week, which can have a pretty tricky entrance to the strike if you don't know what you're doing. This build is going to heavily center around Invis for your team, but we aren't going to be using Omnioculus. The Invis is going to come from our dodges, smoke bombs, and any finisher we get on an enemy. And the smoke bomb is also going to apply to our teammates, which allows us to make them Invis as soon as we revive them, or allows all of us to just run past something if need be. Our dodge is also going to replenish our melee, so we can chain multiple invis effects back to back to make this last a super long time, which comes in clutch if you are ever the last player standing and aren't in a good setting to just get revives right away. I did mention that we are generating ammo for our team, and we are going to be doing that through the exotic gauntlets Aeon Swift. These are one of the best exotics in the entire game because of how important heavy ammo is in the current meta, so these make taking out champs a breeze because you can just always spam heavy. And finally, our grenades, super, and even our smoke bomb are all going to apply weaken effects to enemies, so you can use these to get a solid 15% debuff, making champion kills and boss base much easier, and then tether is obviously going to be a bit better overall as it deals huge amounts of damage and is a 30% debuff, which is slightly higher. If you guys do like these build videos and you want to see more like them, make sure to drop a like and sub down below. Only 15% of you guys that watch these videos are actually subbed, so click that red button. And with that said, let's get into our Void subclass layout. For Super, I am running Mobius Quiver. This just has better damage overall for soloing champions and other mini bosses. But if you guys do need ad clear depending on the specific GM you are running or any specific section, Deadfall is just as good. Gamer's Dodge is going to give us a melee charge back anytime that we dodge near an enemy, so that is used in the invis chaining. And even though you can't choose anything else, Smoke Bomb itself is going to be used either to apply invis to ourself and teammates, or you are also going to be able to use this as a weaken effect on enemies. The invis isn't native, but we are going to be getting that from one of our aspects. And then lastly, I prefer to run Vortex Grenade with this build. This is just what I find the best and most consistent for applying a debuff and for ad clearing. Our first aspect is going to be Trapper's Ambush. This is going to allow our smoke bombs to apply invis to ourselves and teammates. And then this is also going to give us the quick fall ability. Now, anytime we are in the air, we can quickly dodge downwards. And when landing, we are going to release a cloud of smoke that weakens all nearby enemies and still applies invis to us and our team as well. Second to this is going to be Vanishing Step. This very simply just allows our dodges to also apply invis effect on us. Dodge cooldowns are also going to be based on mobility, as most people are aware, so higher mobility with this build is going to be better as well. The major downside to running these aspects is that we're only going to be getting three fragment slots out of them, so first and foremost, we are running Echo of Undermining. This allows our Void Grenades to apply weaken effects, so for Vortex, this will apply on the very first tick, and then keep reapplying until the grenade leaves. And once again, this is a 15% debuff, so an enemy that has a supply to them will now take 15% more damage from all sources. Echo of Persistence increases the effects of all the Void buffs applied to us. This is going to be Overshield and Devour, which we aren't going to be using, and then Invis, which we obviously will be. This is a super solid 41.5% increase in Invis duration, which is going to allow us to chain Invis much longer without needing crazy cooldowns on all of our abilities. Last but not least, we do have Echo of Obscurity. This is one of my personal favorite fragments because with this, we gain invis every time we get a finisher final blow. This means even without any abilities, we can technically maintain invis indefinitely as long as there is something to finish. But the main reason that this is as strong as it is is because we constantly become untargetable after getting off finishers on champions. So it fits perfectly into this build and allows us to play extremely risky without any of the risk essentially. Looking over at Aeons, these are going to be available on all three classes, and for the most part, players always run the Sect of Insight mod. 
second part of Sect of Insight reads that finishers on elites generate special ammo for your team, and then finishers on mini bosses and bosses generates heavy ammo. Champions count as an enemy type that spawns in heavy ammo, so in a GM setting, you can easily burn heavy to get a champion low, have the player on Aeons do a finisher, and then have the other two players' ammo restocked. You could potentially have multiple players doing this as well, however with Hunter, being able to spam invis and reach champions that might be in a dangerous area is super useful, and then again, you gain invis from the finisher so you can easily get out safely. I always say that mods, for the most part, are going to be useless in GMs unless a very specific build requires them, and that tends to be the exact same case in this build as well. This season, since we do have Arc Burn in 5 of the 6 Nightfalls, I highly recommend bringing in an Arc Rocket or a Linear Fusion Rifle. This means that Ammo Finders and Scavengers are a good fit for this build because you won't ever be generating ammo for yourself because Aeons only work for teammates. So having double Ammo Finders on your helmet helps a bunch with ammo drops, and then a Scavenger mod on your legs will help these Finder Bricks, which have less base ammo, give you more. I do also really like running Powerful Friends on one armor piece because it gives plus 20 mobility. That helps a bunch on Hunter with generating dodges, especially since we are in a resilience meta. And then Reactive Pulse can also be super useful if you find yourself dying when doing finishers. This gives you an overshield while in the finisher animation, which makes it borderline impossible to die as long as you go in with near full health. And both of these are the secondary perks for the mods, so you will need at least one regular arc mod on for them to be activated. Other than that, no major combat style mods really help this build out. This has been one of my favorite builds to run in GMs because when stuff goes south, it's very, very easy to save a run. Especially in harder GMs where you might work 15 to 20 minutes just to reach a boss fight, which ends up being the hardest part. There are a lot of other builds that might make specific GMs go faster, but anytime I go into something new or something that tends to be extremely difficult, this is the build that I take in because I know how hard it is for a team to die with just one player running this, and the ammo economy makes dealing with champions and other mini bosses that much easier. Let me know your guys' thoughts on the build in the comments below, along with some of your other favorite Hunter GM builds to run. I do also stream a bunch over on Twitch when I'm not sick, so if you do want to watch some low mans, speedruns, and other PvE challenges, a link to that is in the description below, along with my Discord server as well, if you guys want to stop by there and get links to all my dim builds. Anyways, that's all for this video, guys. As always, have a good one. Peace.